Welcome to Games Over Coffee. <laughs> Welcome. Today we are going to be discussing Inside. Mm -hmm. We're going to be talking about Inside. We both play, play Deads Inside. Play Deads Inside. That's right. It's a. It's I like a player title. unknowns battleground. <laughs> <You're> right. <laughs> we played it to completion, and we're going to have a discussion about it. Yes, sir. About our experience. But first, coffee. Coffee. Yeah, that's right. What kind of coffee you got there? I've got a nitro. Nitro. Nitro coffee. That's it? Yeah. There's nothing fancy. Nitro cold brew? Nit oh, it's cold brew. Oh, yeah. is nitro default cold brew? N yes. You can't have hot yeah, nitro? I don't, I don't think you could have hot, hot, hot nitro. nitro. <laughs> yeah, that'd be kind of strange. Well, what do you got? This is a, um, see, I feel bad because this is a uh, vanilla latte. And I felt bad because we're supposed to do different drinks. And this is a repeat. I think I got this on you the first step. We're doing comforting drinks. Okay, yeah. So if that's that right. makes you comfortable. Yeah, this makes me very, com this is making me uh, feel comforted with all my, my woes. All your woes. My sorrows. From, from playing this game? Yeah, from playing this game, yeah. Inside is uh, in the same vein as Limbo. Right. Which was another game that looks similar to this, but it's black and white. Yeah, left to right puzzle. Puzzle building, puzzle game. Even the same theme, kind of, like kid versus the world. Right, right, yeah. Puzzle puzzle game with a big emphasis on um, environmental story yes. telling. Yeah. Yes. Uh, and so no dialogue. Yeah. No, uh, I mean, there's some music, but barely music. Yeah, not much. Yeah. I think that's awesome. Yeah. I love it. Yeah, so let's talk about uh, just hot takes first. What, what did you like? I love did, this game. Did you like me? Yeah, I totally loved it. Um, I loved the atmosphere, I loved the tone, yeah. I loved the uh, storytelling, the way they do it, it's all environmental. Yeah. It's the kind of storytelling that you don't really see in video games that often. It's like- uh, I would say that you normally see in video games, at least really? ones that try to tell stories, yeah. Through- Through environment. Environment, yeah. Environmental storytelling is popular, like that's done a lot. It, like Skyrim and- Right. There's tons of games that do that. What I mean, like, this feels like how a movie does yeah. storytelling, where it's right. like show, don't tell. Right, so right. Where it's all th situations going on in the background, situations that you're in. Yeah. And a lot of stuff that you're left to kind of infer. And you, you have, have to figure it out all the stuff. Yeah. Just kind of figure it out. Yeah. yeah. Rather than having exposition that's telling you anything. Yeah. Rather than meeting a character that's explaining anything to you. Right. Or having any kind of conversation. Right. Uh, it's all environmental. Yeah, definitely. All world, world building, yeah. basically. So uh, I loved the game too. Yeah. Yeah. That's um, awesome. It's a. Uh, it's, I think this is the kind of game that if, if anyone knew what my taste in games were, they'd be like, you'd love this game yeah. inside. Uh, it is smack in the middle of my taste, but it's not where I would like it to be. Mm. Um, I, I, like, I like this game a ton. Like, I, I couldn't like it anymore, I don't right. think. But uh, the way it chooses to do storytelling and the way it chooses to do its mechanics and stuff like that, like puzzle solving and stuff, uh, it's like it's a it's way above all the other games. So like, there's all the other games are here. <laughs> it's here. Yeah, I want it to be even here. higher. Yeah. yeah, just a little better. Yeah, I just wanted I wanted it to be better. So like the environmental st storytelling is awesome. Yeah, it's really really good. Uh, what I prefer in games is interactive storytelling. Okay. Oh, so, that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. So I like, understand that. So the, so the same kind of stuff, except I'd like you know, all my puzzles to mean something. Right. You know, to actually tell me something about the story. Yeah. Uh, and it doesn't, but it's but it's cool. Would you say that the the mind control element yes. is entwined with the story a little the, bit? All of it's intertwined in, in, in themes, mm -hmm. uh, like especially the end. Yeah. The end is totally enthralled in the theme, the whole puzzle of the end is in the theme of, uh, of small versus big. Right. Um, and strange versus and new versus old. I don't know. I, I wouldn't say they're they're not telling the story. They are. They're in the story. Mm. You know, but they're not telling it. Gotcha. Like for example, this puzzle that you're doing here. This is you, right? Yeah, that's me. Uh, this puzzle where you go over the wall. It's really cool. It's really inventive. It's really neat how you figure it out. Uh, it doesn't mean anything in the story though. Right. This sort of part was funny to me because I thought, I thought I. Because I remember the chicks and all that 
and yeah. seeing them. And I, and I was confused at what they were at the beginning. I was like, what are these things? They're yeah. like chirping at me. Yeah. And then it, it's kind of obvious in retrospect that they're like chicks. Um, I didn't know what they were when I first saw them. I didn't either. I, yeah. I, I thought they were just creatures of some sort, magical creatures. Yeah, that's that what chirped. I thought. Because they like they have like a sort of mystical jingle to yeah, them too. Like they, they weren't like chirp. They don't exactly. chirp. They go yeah. like ding ding. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And so here I thought, um, I thought, uh, <laughs> I thought I had to get them sucked up, and I thought it was gonna like grind them to a pulp so, so and I kill them. I did too. Yeah. <laughs> that's crazy. Are they gonna die? And I was like, oh no, that's terrible. Yeah. <laughs> but I actually thought that's what happened the first time I did it. Uh, uh, because I don't remember seeing the chicks after they, they go through. But the second time I did it, I was like, oh, you're just, they just come out yeah. fine. Yeah, they're just being thrown around. Yeah, they're just being thrown around. Yeah, yeah. that's kind of funny. Yeah. I, I definitely like the mechanics of the game, you know? They're super really, they're really interesting. It, you played Limbo, right? Yeah, I haven't played Limbo all the way through. Yeah. Yeah. I played probably about 75%. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it plays just like Limbo, pretty much. Yeah, definitely. Even the same kind of puzzles where you have to move objects from one side to another to utilize them. Right, yeah. Um, Limbo has more of a platforming kind of feel to it. Yeah, it kind of does. Yeah, Thank this, this one's that. more of a... I don't know, they're, they're more... Oh, I, don't, I don't know what the word is. I think it's is. more narrative focused, honestly. It, it is. I think it's more fo a world focused, I think is what it is. More what? World focused. Oh, yeah. Okay, like, yeah, that's a way to put it. Like all the all the elements that you use in Limbo, they were all kind of like it was just big stuff that is there. Yeah. And it kind of makes sense in the world because there's like giant spiders and there's other kids, but they're also glowy eyed. Like right. it's just strange yeah. stuff. It's very fantasy driven. Yeah. And there's like there's mechanics in there, but uh, like there's machinery in there that you use to like traverse and stuff. Mm. And it doesn't really make sense, but it doesn't really need to because again, the world isn't really explained to you at all. It's just kind of this world. Just there. Yeah, but but this place is all completely explained. Yeah. Um, so you're totally right about that. All the puzzle elements in here fit exactly into the environment. Right. Um, and like that, like the... the yeah, it's like a car bunch of pigs on there. Yeah. Carcasses. Like there, you're in a slaughterhouse, they have pigs there, dead pigs, and you use yeah. it to go somewhere else. Yeah. Like, that's a perfect use of uh, environmental storytelling and mechanics. Right. But yeah, it's not a, I wouldn't say it's story focused though. Yeah, it's more world focused. World focused, yeah. yeah. Just figuring out what this place is. Right. And that was the coolest part for me. Yeah, figuring out what figure the out whole what thing is. is. Yeah. yeah. So what did you conclude? Man, it was tough. I don't know, I, I, cause, cause I kind of, I want to hear what you think first, because yeah. I had two ideas, but what, okay. what do you think? Well, so I, I pretty much came to the conclusion that this little boy is escaping from a mass, uh, some kind of huge facility, like a plantation sort of thing that's just on a humongous scale. Yeah. And that this plantation facility is using mind control and, and is it's basically like a huge factory for producing and organizing mind-controlled people, like slaves, right, right. and then selling them to to other people to the elite, yeah, yeah. high high tier people. Yeah. And then it's about this little boy who's in that system, escaping it, and he escapes it, trying to get. He's inside, you know. He's inside this thing, and he's trying to get out of it. That's yeah. So that's that's interesting. That. <laughs> This, this was cool. Uh, that, that's a that's a limbo thing that's going on here, right? I think so. Yeah. The mind control worms. I don't remember exactly. In limbo, uh, you had those little glow mind control worms that would mm -hmm. latch onto your forehead, and if they got onto you, you couldn't move your character anymore. Mm. I don't remember that at all. It's been uh, a long time. Yeah. Um, I thought that was a neat little nod. That's funny. Oh, um, here actually, here right here, I was thinking because uh, I was still tr it's still early in the game here. I'm trying to piece it together, and I saw that thing, and I was like, okay. The, the world is overrun by this parasite. Everybody's getting this parasite in them. It's like a zombie thing. And it's just a nod. Yeah, it is all it is. Yeah. yeah. 
Well, and that's what I mean by some of the storytelling elements, just kind of everything's connected to the world, so you have to piece together everything. Yeah. Which, which is fine. Um, <laughs> that tripped me up. Yeah, I was like, damn, what pretty the... Um, so what I got uh, from it, the first time I did it, I was, I was pretty, pretty close to what you were just saying. Yeah. The first time I played it, I was like, oh, you're escaping this thing. But then while I was playing through about halfway through, I'm like, it seems like you're going deeper and deeper into this place. Mm -hmm. I keep going, you keep going down, right. I keep going into water and stuff. And I'm like, that's a really interesting play on the theme and, and the the word inside right i'm like I, I guess that means we're going inside something but why i thought we were escaping is right what i'm thinking um so I, I put together that i think this kid is i don't think he's part of the system i think he, he came from outside and is trying to break into the system to to free oh the yeah thing that's here well, that's interesting yeah that's cool so i like that so we already talked, well, we already posted spoilers, right? I don't know if we yeah. posted. Yeah. But anyway, this is massive spoilers. Yeah. But um, at the very end of it, uh, with that thing that we set free, um, I thought he was a part of it first because because he goes into it, uh -huh. right? And he's absorbed. So I figured, what if he was like a part of this thing that turned into like a little kid? But then I was like, well, that doesn't make any sense because then how did he get to the surface? And then why does it go back? <laughs> like that's make any sense. No, yeah, I, I, I think you're, I think you are onto something with that. I like that idea. That makes sense because it doesn't really, because it starts in like the woods, right? And, and so and you're going in, like you're breaking into a facility. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. I kind of, uh, I went large scale with it yeah. to reconcile that dissonance. Yeah. Where I was like that, I imagined that this facility was just massive. Yeah. No, yeah. it is though. And it is massive. Yeah. 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 But that does make sense that he. Because the boy definitely seems... Oh, you think it's so more, so much more massive that he looks like he's escaping when he's in the woods. Exactly, like that woods is still within the facility. Right, gotcha. Yeah. Okay. That's how massive, that's how, that's the scale that I went to. That you imagined. Yeah. Right. But it makes sense because the boy doesn't seem to, like he's got color on and stuff. Yeah. So he kind of seems a little different from the rest. Yeah. So it makes sense that maybe like his parents to, to go in full See, speculation cool. mode. Yeah, like, like his parents are got abducted, abducted. Yeah, and so he's on this big like avenge thing where he's gonna yeah. go in and destroy it from the inside. Yeah, destroy it from the inside. Yeah. yeah. I think that's what it is. Yeah. What's really uh, cool about this whole thing, so like I, I was, we we're talking about trying to figure out what this is all about. Um, trying to figure out like the backgrounds of some of these places that you're in was just insane to yeah. me. Uh, there's a part where uh, you see trains going by, mm -hmm. you know, and they're, and they're carrier trains that are carrying all the mind control people. And um, you get to a part just after that where the trains are derailed and they're just like they've crashed some time ago. Like, looks like they've been sitting there for at least a week or something. Mm -hmm. and, and you get to like, like, like even this part, like a lot of it looks very abandoned. Yes. You know, it was true. a place that used to be in high production. And they're still utilizing some of it, mm -hmm. but most of it is abandoned. Right. So I'm trying to figure out why that is and what's going on. That's true. Even when we get like deeper into the facility, yeah, it, like like whole uh, whole sections of their office is like completely underwater. Right. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Where uh, where they have empty office chairs and computers that are just sitting. And then it's really cool because at the very very end you see their desks and you see where people people are leaving their desks to go see this event that's happening that tripped me up that was awesome that right? was awesome yeah <laughs> um that guy who like runs he's like running into frame same yeah. way you're going into chairs yeah. yeah i was like afraid of him i was like he's yeah. gonna get me or something yeah but Wasn't he just runs like, past you that's the coolest dynamic it is the coolest dynamic yeah. i totally love that yeah that's one of those things that i really really like in video games is that you've created the dynamic between the the world and the player and then you play with that dynamic. Yeah. And like Kojima does that all the time in his yeah. games. Like playing with that dynamic is awesome. Um, and here they've created fear, you know, there. And then so when they have a guy, again, like the Dark Souls thing with the, the yeah, worshiping the, people. And the, the, the hollows in the new Londo rooms. Yeah. 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 Because you've created this, this expectation and then you break the expectation. Right. Yeah. You know? Where it's like through the whole game, every time you see a human, 
adult human yeah. they're there to kill you there to yeah they're to literally kill you yeah and in this case one comes running but he just runs past and you. he doesn't care yeah you're like well that must mean something's even crazy. yeah something crazier yeah so you <laughs> right. go and try to look in that window but you don't really see what it is yeah and they don't even care when you're there yeah like people look at you and they're like whatever yeah it's like it doesn't matter <laughs> you're just like wow i gotta get in there there's something's in there now, what does that say for the story if these the menial office workers don't care that he's out that he's out that it means right it means something was happening right in that vat oh right with, with the thing in it yeah which yeah was that right thing that you go into yeah that always made me wonder what exactly was happening at that moment yeah and and is that what caused everyone else to abandon everything else like a week or a day prior or why things went to hell yeah, some was a super powered mutant they yeah. accidentally created or went too far with yeah the, this this i i get this huge lovecraft vibe from this mm. whole game about the small versus big thing the sonic boom er, part that was amazing yeah that was insane <laughs> right Like, like bomb, shockwave, something like exploding. Something, right? You don't know what it is, and they never show it. Yeah. And it's really it's that's what gives me that Lovecraft vibe, and that and the uh, the thing at the end that you become right. is is something that's not of this world. Right. Because it's like a sponge, almost like kind of like mutating and yeah. forming to whatever it needs to. It can squeeze through tiny right. spaces, <laughs> like a like a like a squid. Yeah. You know? Right. So so were they were they building this thing? The yeah. monster at the end that yeah. you become and go on a rampage with. Yeah, um, I think Cause, so. Yeah, because it's it's a mut it's mutated human. Yeah, I think it is an experiment that they were doing. Yeah, it, but like, how is that connected to the mind control? What were they gonna do with it? Yeah, yeah. how does it matter? Like, it's a new product. Yeah, and it's a new product. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I think that's kind of the messy theme about this this whole game. I really really enjoy this theme of uh, of big and unknown and Lovecraft, but. But uh, yeah, I'm not sure the story elements connect so much for me. At the very end, especially. Yeah. I think, yeah. It starts to fall apart as I piece it together. Yeah. Which makes, which kind of makes me go, uh, Yeah, it's like kind of unfortunate. Yeah. Because like, I like the ending where he rolls out and it's just on the beach. I think oh, that was very really cool. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. But then it, the, the biggest like weird thing about it is I guess the character's motivation to go into this ball yeah. monster thing and like then- Like, why are you doing that? Yeah, rampage through everything. Yeah. I, I get, from the player's point of view, it's really cathartic it is. to have that yeah. upper hand finally through the whole game and get and to that destroy dynamic. everything. Yeah. yeah. It's really cool. And that feels awesome. It does, yeah. But it is like a little bit of a- It's more maybe, of a question. Yeah, it is more of a question. And I don't know if that's really a fault too much or yeah. if it's one of those I things don't like that, it you know yeah it's one of those things that i'm like i kind of wish this was better yeah i love it you know like i said i love it but i do wish it was it's just like it's just because like you can't you don't know the motivation of your character at all yeah and that's why it's yeah. hard to make that leap and that's what's strange about because that's a weird thing to do like i almost right. did like I, I didn't want him to be stuck in there forever right know? like I'm sure like he, you become that thing and it's you're it's you're you're uh What's the word? Your empathy yeah. hasn't shifted. You're still the kid. Exactly. But but you're inside the big thing now. Yeah, so it's like if 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 the kid exists as an insert for the player, yeah. then I, in my experience, I did not want to be inside to be stuck inside <laughs> yeah. of it. But it's, you know? that's, that's interesting because that's I think that's the reason why I thought he was a part of the thing in yeah. the beginning. Because I was like, when I finished it, I'm like, oh, maybe that, maybe he came from that thing and then, but that wouldn't make any sense. But the reason why I thought that was because at the very end, I was empathic with that ball. And I was thinking that the ball and the kid were one of the same. But, but if they're not, then it feels a little weird. And also I think, I don't know what he really achieves. Right. So I think what it is at the very end, I mean, it feels very, uh, you're doing everything you can to escape, right? Even if it means dying. Yeah. But, but it doesn't matter. You're gonna escape. Okay. Yeah. So, th so this is a, now it 
it depends on how what we were talking about earlier with our interpretations. Yeah. If at the beginning of the game he is inside of the facility mm -hmm. and his objective is to just get out, right? Then that makes more sense to me. It does. That's why I was thinking that he's part of the ball. Yeah. But, he, but that again, that, I don't think that makes sense. But if we go by the idea that he's breaking into it yeah. to destroy it from the inside then it feels weird then it doesn't make any sense because right. he does a he could he does some damage to it yeah. and then escapes out and is just like hanging out on the right. beach on the outside <laughs> right it's like he didn't achieve anything at the end yeah not yeah. not too much so that's interesting yeah. because those are two two uh two interpretations that we already talked about at the beginning of the episode yeah but <laughs> one of them works for the ending and one of them doesn't. One of them doesn't, yeah. Which is kind of weird. But they both interpretations make sense. Within also. the, yeah. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know, man. That's what happens with these kind of, we talk about this all the time with movies and stuff. It's yeah. interpretive film and. Right. Well, so this is what is, that, that's what I don't like about. Art in general. Yeah. Uh, that's what I don't like about games that do this kind of thing. You know, that's what I was talking about when I wish it was just a little higher is because in interactive storytelling, things like that don't happen. I mean, you can, you can have an inferred interactive experience like Anti-Chamber, for example, is a game that does that. But there's uh, there's elements in it. Everything in here is, is about discovery. Mm -hmm. It's about you finding out exactly what's happening and, and absorbing everything from the get-go. And you're having a, uh, a show don't tell moment, mm -hmm. but video games take it a step further uh, they used to say, do, don't show. Do, don't show. <laughs> yeah, in video games. And what is interesting about that is because if you show people stuff while they're doing it, then they don't really, they they get the situation, but there's no nuance, there's no depth, there's no interest in, in like the, the actual doing part, mm -hmm. you know? So like Portal, for example, is a game that I think does it very well. Uh, they, you understand your motivation because you've been doing it the whole time. Right. You know? Is very active. Yeah. yeah. So, like, if you understood why you went into the facility in the first place, then the whole story might have made more sense. Yeah. But, and I don't, I don't think that's. I think that's. I think that's the fault of the designer here, or the fault of the game, the developer, is that I don't think they. I don't think they knew how to tell their story interactively, because mm. I think when it comes to saying that motivation, they probably wanted to be like. Well, we could just tell the player what they're doing, but that's, we don't want to do that. We want to be more artistic about it, be more absorb, uh, observant about yeah. it. And they did, but that comes with its own caveats. Sure. So yeah. you need to go a step further and be like, uh, hey player, interact this way, and that will give you the motivation. Right, you know? yeah. And I think for that to work in this game with how they have it designed, it's, it's pretty challenging to do that with the mechanics they have oh, here. Yeah. Because yeah. the mechanics are very limited. They are. It's just left, right, grab, jump. Right, and even with that, they were able to do things like this. So, yeah, you know? this was awesome. I love I this. I yeah. love this. Yeah, I thought that was so cool. Yeah, yeah, I really, really, really like all these things in here. I kind of wish they went for a, a little more of a stealth yeah. slant. I think you like the stealth a I'm lot. A, I'm a big <laughs> stealth fan, I like stealth games. <laughs> yeah. um, and the beginning kind of started stealthy. Yeah. And this part kind of feels stealthy. What I really like about this part uh, is that, you know, you need some sort of uh, rhythm to understand what they're doing, mm -hmm. right? You need to, to time your things right. And they play a rhythm. Yeah. But what's cool is that it's not really music. It's just, it's it's playing, but it's just kind of part of the tone. This part, okay, puzzles like this. Yeah. These are the type of puzzles that mess me up the most. Ooh, timing okay. things and- Oh, timing. And like, realize it, realizing that like for this puzzle, the solution is to jump up the ledge, have the dog be coming towards you, yeah. and get close, then jump back off the ledge so the dog so loops around, around. Yeah. comes close, then you jump up the ledge and you have enough time to run yeah. and escape. Yeah. 
um, that did not come intuitively at all to me. Interesting. Yeah. So that came very intuitive for me. In fact, right. I think pretty much every puzzle came intuitive to me. It doesn't. It doesn't feel like I'm supposed to do this. It feels. It feels like what I did was correct, and that's awesome. Yeah. And that's that's just what, thankfully, just happened. Just kept happening. You just figured it out. Yeah. yeah. See, this is me just trying to figure out. Just trying to figure the, it out the rules. Yeah. And, and that really sucks happen. when that happens, yeah. man. When when the puzzle gets between you and the game. Yeah. And you're just like, I, I want to enjoy it, but now I don't know what you're trying to tell me. Yeah. Yeah. And the thing that messed me up with this one particularly was because I made an assumption that. Um, if I jumped off the ledge and the dog was on the same plane as me and I jumped off, that the dog would just follow me and oh, jump yeah. off also, like that. But it doesn't, I right. see there. Which doesn't make sense to me, honestly. That, that he doesn't follow you? Yeah, that he wouldn't just jump off the ledge. Right. Because it's not a big ledge or anything. Something that scared me the crap out of me was the same kind of concept. Yeah. I, I was trying to escape from a dog in the water and mm -hmm. I jumped up into the water, I'm like, okay, I'm safe. And then he jumps into the water too. I'm like, what the <laughs> and, and just kills me and I'm like, holy crap. That like, scared me so much. Um, and uh, yeah, it was one of those things where they just kind of, just kind of put the rules into there. Just, you know, the dog's not gonna jump off the ledge because we want you to do a certain thing. Right, because yeah. it, it is, they want, there's a puzzle there. The puzzle breaks if right. the dog jumps off the ledge. Yeah, and unfortunately that for them, they just, or unfortunately for you, were for me, for is I couldn't suspend my disbelief that a dog would not just well, jump off well, the ledge. It, not that so much, but I mean, yes, definitely that. But like, that they, was my experience. It was your experience, but they, they didn't. The reason why you had the experience is I don't think they communicated enough. What you were supposed to do. Yeah, yeah. enough to what, because for me, it was just, I, I just felt that way immediately. Like, um, to me, it just made sense that the dog just didn't. clicked. Yeah. yeah. For some reason, I, I built that bridge yeah. already. But, but it does take more explanation, you know, if you think about it some more. Yeah. And maybe what they did was they play tested this enough to where enough people figured it out. On that the they time. were like, if they were able to just accept yeah. the rule. Yeah. You know, but, uh, but yeah, I think there's definitely room for improvement there. And they do improve that, that almost exact same puzzle is later in the game with yeah. the three dogs and you have the chain the link fence. fence. Yeah. That made perfect sense. See, because you know? they communicated it here. Yeah. So I think maybe if they did it again prior, but to a, a much smaller, yeah. non-threatening thing. Yeah. Like if they reversed those puzzles. Yeah. Instead, we we get the chain link make one more first. Sense. Yeah, because it's a wall. Yeah, because a dog can't jump up that or jump through it. Right. And that's then you get the mechanic of how the puzzle works. It's timing based. Yeah. See, that's that's design right there. And, yeah. And that that's the stuff that I really like about games and can really, really appreciate it when it when it's done well. Mm. But but yeah, sometimes, sometimes it doesn't do it so well. And some of the puzzles in here are really, really complicated. Not really complicated, but they have a lot of steps. A lot of steps, yeah. yeah. And, and that's not to say, like, that puzzle yeah. was one of the, there's two in this game that I got stuck on. Yeah. And that was one. And I figured it out. It didn't take me that long. Right. Um, and then there was one more that I actually had to look it up. Oh really? Yeah, I was very Wh stuck. Which one was that? It was the one with the mermaid yeah. mermaid lady and the chain where you press the button and you're on the chain and you go back and forth. Oh yeah. I I, I had trouble figuring that one out, but I I did figure it out. Yeah. Uh before I get into that, yeah. I just want to make the point that most of the puzzles in this game are excellent. I yeah. felt, and I didn't get stuck very, those are the only times I got stuck. And so that experience I had with the dog was like one right. out of dozens of puzzles right. that were awesome. Like that doesn't show your, your whole gameplay, yeah. basically. Yeah, and I, I saw so I like, I liked most of the puzzles a lot. Yeah. I thought the puzzles were awesome here. That's good. Um, I like- I, I did too, I loved all the puzzles. Like I think my favorite one was the one where you, you go around the facility like gathering a herd of yeah, those were fun. people yeah that was a lot of fun yeah those were really cool and then you get kind of powerful cause yeah you pick up things they're like throwing you around and yeah. stuff that's really fun that is a lot of fun yeah um though so this water one yeah with the, the chain and the mermaid lady like i was getting kind of frustrated because i just didn't know what to do yeah i just had no idea right i couldn't figure it out 
I just couldn't and figure it, it out. And you just looked it up. Yeah, like, so, okay. yeah. So uh, the way I figured it out was, um, so like when I got to the bottom of the chain and the mermaid came came for me, I'm like, oh, I've got to lure them. And then, and then everything came together after that. Yeah, I, um, yeah, I solved the, I guess I kind of had that idea when yeah. I was trying to figure it out. I was, I was like, maybe, maybe I can lure it, but I remember trying it but it not and working. It working like i didn't do it correctly i think i, I think that yeah. also happened to me the first time and too. so then i wrote it off yeah and then i was like really frustrated right <laughs> yeah yeah that's another design thing yeah yeah the first time that mermaid though popped up there's like that jump scare that got me yeah like i actually jumped and like yeah vocalized yeah <laughs> <laughs> oh jeez. That terrified me. Uh, I wouldn't call this game a horror game. No. But yeah, the holy crap, does it have some scares in it? Yeah, it really uh, eerie. I, I dreaded going in for the second time doing those damn mermaid ones. Those ones, Cause yeah. Because I didn't know, th there were so many things that screwed me over on my first attempt. And I really wish I had recorded my first gameplay in this, but the, the first time that I did that, uh, you, you see the mermaids when you're in the, the ball, right? The, the little submarine thing. And I was like, I was thinking, wow, that's, that's a creepy looking thing, right? It can't get me though when I'm in a submarine. And it can. <laughs> and you're like, oh my God, like, like that, that shattered a reality for me. Yeah. Right? Cause I was like, I'm protected. Right. What I'm not is yeah. the thing. And, and not, not only was it that dynamic, but on top of that, it's just scary the way they turn and, and go really fast and everything yeah um and they just look creepy and uh, it's like a one hit ko right oh right and every so so all these things like they don't just slow you down it's just you're done you have to do it again so i really dreaded in going in for the second time because i'm just like these mermaids man I, I i remember hating them in the first time so i'm gonna try it a second time and just ooh. still freaky yeah they weren't they weren't as freaky because i knew exactly what to do this time but uh but yeah it still it still was a little bit and then they have a scripted mermaid attack, mm. which uh, screwed me up because I, I remember trying my hardest to get away from this one mermaid that is scripted to attach to you and then yeah. bring you down. And then you become... And then you become a mermaid yourself, yeah. sort of. Uh, yeah, that was really, really cool. I really like that a lot. Uh, but that was scary. They did a really cool job at like timing some of those yeah. where like, you it's always just barely yeah that you get that you through. escape yeah that you escape yeah and the, all the doors tense. that are coming down that you just barely get under yeah uh the dogs that you barely escape their jaws yeah the guys with the flashlights and the guns i started like i noticed it and i knew it was the case yeah but it was still nerve-wracking it is yeah yeah every time that i see a dog coming in for the background no less yeah i think that's one of the things they do really good in here is that they create uh that spatial recognition really, really well, so that bad guys don't just attack you from the from the opposite side of the screen or whatever. Right on the you same know. plane that you're on. Yeah. There is the depth of. Well, not not just that, but like I'm, I'm imagining like early NES games, right? Mm -hmm. um, where you would go from left to right, say shooters like uh, or any games like this, like Castlevania, for example. If you think about the first Castlevania. You go from left to right, and there's. Uh, sometimes you go from right to left, but sometimes there's bad guys behind you, and they they don't they creep up on you and then they get you, but they don't have time for you to build up the scare. You know, there's no oh shit, it's gonna get me, it's gonna get me. It's, uh, it's not. Oh that. yeah, yeah. It's just you. it's just okay. Well, I gotta do it again. Yeah. This one, they don't just get you right. If there's a mermaid in there, it it comes up from the bottom, you know, or it comes from the other side of the screen, or if there's a dog, it's in the background running to get you in the in the foreground like right. that's really scary because because you you see it the whole time and you're trying to figure out how do i escape while they're attacking you and yeah they funny. give you enough time in between your death and yeah. knowing that there's a threat you you have to you know, you're dreading it mm -hmm. is what you're doing and yeah. you have to escape while you're in dread yeah which creates a really scary moment it makes it extremely tense yeah yeah the yeah. suspense is crazy yeah i really really enjoy that i do too i thought that was amazing yeah, yeah. Oh, and just to just to mention that the art design of the whole game is just incredible. It's incredible. Yeah, it's just <laughs> yeah. so good. Yeah. No, there's there's yeah, 
nothing I hate at all. Yeah, about that, this. the whole aesthetic is just, it's just gorgeous. Yeah, absolutely gorgeous. I and I really like the ideas that they play with in here, like the the upside down water. Yeah, is dude, awesome. that was trippy. One yeah. of the craziest things I was like, like you know when we were talking about Death Stranding, mm -hmm. and I'm like rocking the controller. I'm like, I've never done this in a game before. Yeah, this one, I I was. I was thrown from a group of naked bodies <laughs> up into the air to swim. <laughs> like, th that's never happened in a game. <laughs> that is really imaginative. <laughs> yeah. That's very creative. Yeah. Yeah, this game is awesome. It has so much creativity in it. Very, yeah, quite a lot. A lot of it reminds me of Portal. Yeah. It's, it's interesting. Yeah, it's got some Portal in it. Um, the animations are so good. I was going to say, the animations are super smooth. Yeah. Really cool. One of the things that I thought was really interesting about their, their model design was all the adults, or at least all the adults that are mind controlled, are not textured very well, but I think it's on purpose. Like they're mm -hmm. not modeled very well or textured very well because they're, because you can't, you can't make everyone look like the kid as detailed as him because it's a game and you have, you know, only so much uh, space to work with. But I think what they did was they, they created a, uh, what, what's the word? They created a separator there where the kid is separate from these other things because you're alive right and they're not yeah they're, you have your mind and they don't yeah yeah and so it's cool if they look kind of disheveled and different because it makes perfect sense yeah because it yeah. makes sense because exactly. they're hollow people yeah know? and and it, it still holds up because when you see uh like occasionally you'll see other people who right. look to be who look to be like you yeah yeah who have more detail in them like like you see the people who wear masks that right. have faces on them right and they have like clothes and stuff and a little bit of color and yeah more detailed yeah yeah the uh like the hair on the mermaids yeah are crazy yeah that is crazy another thing about uh playing with character or player dynamic between them and the machine is uh is letting you discover underwater for the first time so like every time that you've they they, inter they slowly introduce you to water, right? First you're running in puddles, mm -hmm. and then you cross streams, and then you have to swim. Yeah. And then you have to dive underwater at one point, and you realize that you can't breathe forever, so you have to go back up, you know, pretty quickly. But then you get to a point where you get to that submarine, and now you get to go down. Yeah. Hey, go down as far as you want. Yeah. Yeah, and it's really, really cool. It is cool. I got the kind of sensation, like I got worried every time I went deeper. Oh, really? did you? Yeah, because I, I, I the goal in my head was always escape and and going right. down deeper it is seem, not yeah. escaping you that's know? what was weird me out for the first yeah. time about the theme i was like well he's definitely escaping but why is it called it's inside. called inside yeah. and i'm going down deeper into it yeah what, what is this yeah. my rationalization for that was that he was um that was the way right to get that's out. the way to get out yeah. yeah that's what i thought too but also but but on top of that just knowing that you drown yeah. and you die pretty quick underwater, yeah. made it much more nerve wracking to right. be in a to submarine. to be very deep. Yeah, because you're like, like, well, what happens if I get out? Exactly, yeah. it's like just an insta death. How am I gonna get out of this one? You know? Right, right. I'm buried under all this water. <laughs> right, yeah. It's really cool how you can build that expectation with players. It's it's interesting because that this kind of linear experience, I think with games is really masterful when it comes to like molding player experiences and emotions and stuff. And it's like, you think about like first person shooters or popular third person shooter games where it's just mechanics. I mean, it's just kind of a toy and you're yeah. just playing and they tell a story, sure. And you use the mechanics for the story, okay. But you don't feel the way you're supposed to feel all the time, you know? And we've talked about that word. Oh yeah. That word. That huge one. That huge little narrative dissonance. <laughs> the disconnect between play and story. Uh -huh. And, uh, and it's everywhere in yeah. games, like, right? Uh, like uh, no Russian. Right. In Modern Warfare 2. In Modern Warfare 2, no Russian. Feels yeah. damn good to mow down yeah. all the civilians. Yeah. <laughs> you're doing, yeah, you're doing a terrorist act and it feels amazing. <laughs> it's like, yeah, wait. Um, and wait, hold on. Just to go on a quick little tangent. Yeah, yeah, let's do it. To expand on that. Yeah. It's like, my experience doing that was, one, it was fun to kill all those civilians in the airport with the machine gun. <laughs> yes. Because that's what you've been trained, that mechanic has been trained mechanic, to be yeah. fun right. for the whole game. Right. But I knew that they were trying to do something deep yeah. and trying to make a point. They're like, right. oh, we're gonna 
see this is bad isn't it atrocity whoa terrorism <laughs> and and so when i do it in my head i'm thinking like man this is so bad right. what they're doing but i'm like okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh no this is so bad so bad this yeah. is so bad yeah and that's what i mean yeah, yeah. that's what we're, yeah that's that what is we're talking about. very much ludo narrative distance it is yeah, yeah. and and people that, well, that's that's always the example that people give, not just that that specific that exact example. One. Yeah. But people always give the example of well, you can't make stories for games that make sense because the player can do anything. Right. Like that's not true. It isn't true. You know? Yeah. You can use design in clever ways to emerge emotion. And this is a game that does it. An exact, know? a direct example of what you're talking about. There is, yeah, yeah this game. Yeah. That's why uh, that's why linear experiences are actually pretty awesome. I th yeah. Yeah. And they don't have to. That's the thing. That's one of the, also the reasons that people even give linear a bad name is because people who do linear experiences, someone that's not very good at designing games, doesn't do it well right? and, and a player feels trapped. And like in this game, you never feel trapped. No. You know, you never feel like, you know, oh, it's too bad I have to go this way and not yeah, you're like, that way. I'm, I'm dying to see what's next. Right, you know? right. Yeah. Like, I really want to do this. I really want to complete this puzzle so I get to the next part. Yeah. Yeah. And so, yeah, linear games are kind of a little underrated these days. Yeah. Just because um, open world experiences are so Cause they're big easy. right now. Yeah, and yeah. I'm going to use that word because they're easy. Damn, you're calling open world experiences easy to I make? I am. I am. Easy to do? Well, the, <laughs> I'm, I, hate, I hate using the term because it makes me sound like super uh, yeah, like, what do you know or whatever man. yeah like i'm what I'm, do you know d yeah what do i know what, I, what do you know i, I you actually you kind of know I, I do a lot about yeah, this stuff. about this stuff hmm. <laughs> but uh no but but open world games are the kind of game that you can create almost any t kind of way and have a great experience in yeah because you can do anything in an open world game there's no trapping yeah you know and it's because the designer doesn't have to you know feel like they're they're making a specific experience. They can just open it up. That's why Minecraft is freaking amazing. Minecraft is incredible. Yeah. Yeah. Open world games are awesome. I love open world yeah. games. And it's because you can have any experience you want. Yeah. Basically. Which Linear. Is GTA. Yikes. <laughs> That's GTA 4 for Luda Narrative Dissonance right yeah. there. Yeah. Uh, just to go back to praising Death Stranding for a second. <laughs> open world game. No Luda Narrative Dissonance. Congratulations, Kojima. You win. <laughs> you win. All right. You win. <laughs> he successfully merged linear and open world. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think a lot of people bring up uh, linear game yeah. gameplay as a linear is synonymous with bad, right? Or a negative experience. Yeah. Again, yeah. because you feel trapped, right? Yeah. In when badly it's... designed games. In badly designed games, yeah. linear sucks. Right. Well, In for badly example, open world game, it sucks. For example. Uh... Well, I haven't played it, but the Uncharted series. Yeah. Like a lot of people talk about Uncharted as it's so, you know, you can go in there and have a single experience only. You can you can only do this yes. one experience, which is fine. That's what you're supposed to do in linear games, but you can feel it in Uncharted. Yes. Right? Like you, you're supposed to go this way and you have to do this. Yeah. Thing. It's very much scripted. Yeah. Like the entire game is right. scripted. And, and if yeah. it's designed well, then it doesn't feel scripted. Yeah. And there's a ton of scripted parts in Inside mm. and Limbo. You know, there's, there's, I mean, it is a little more freeform than most games, but like the whole sequence where you're, well, like this part, like the dog's about to come to get you. Yeah. Like that's a puzzle that has to happen, mm -hmm. right? But you never feel like it has to. Yeah, it's just, yeah. Yeah, that is interesting. That's pretty, probably pretty hard to do. Yeah, no, I think it's really hard to do. <laughs> I, think it, I think it's fantastic when it's done correctly. Yeah, that's what, and like um, Half-Life games. It gets me every time, it's like, oh, no, no, no. <laughs> oh, yeah, oh, I actually got got in. I got yeah. got. You got got? Yeah. Sound design, in just incredible. Is it's amazing. so good. Yeah, yeah. All the footsteps, the damp footsteps, the, the dry yeah, the footsteps, reverb. The reverb is yeah. huge. There's, yeah, you're so, you're in so many just massive, massive like cave like structures like this. Yeah, where yeah, where there's no dampening anywhere. So every time you take a step, it's yeah. 
just <laughs> out forever. Yeah. yeah. Oh, dude. Oh, oh that's so sad. <laughs> Uh, the, the, the creaking of the wood, yeah. The breaking, the the uh, the growls and the snores. Yeah, the dogs snores. themselves. Yeah. Uh, the water sounds, the explosions. Ooh, the explo the uh, the sound of the glass breaking when when a mermaid gets you inside of your submarine. Yeah. Shockwave stuff it sounded incredible. that whole shockwave thing, yeah. dude. That was really cool when you end the shockwave part and then you can still hear it. Yeah. Keep going. Oh, dude, that's yeah. even more of the sound design. Like yeah. you'll hear elements of the game that yeah. are coming up. Like coming up, yeah. yeah. Like that, like that part. It'll steadily grow louder yeah. and louder. Yeah. yeah. That is so good. It's really, really cool. There's a, uh, there's also not emergent music, but there, there's music that comes in you know, at certain times it triggers certain points. And when you like figure out a puzzle, like when you get to the point to where you've just introduced a new one or just completed some other one, there's a, there's a pad, mm. a rising pad synth kind of music that comes in. Um, that that lets you know there's something new happening. Yeah, and it's just it's so subtle, but it's really good. That's cool. I, I, I don't want I don't remember that for some reason. No, again, second second playthrough, I may have yeah. seen more things. Noticing it more. Yeah. yeah. Oof, that's so that's awesome. That was a cool puzzle. I like that one. I want to call this game a story driven game, not necessarily a puzzle game, but. I don't know. Oh, that was the thing. That's one of the things that... Uh, Tone-driven, maybe? Tone-driven is the thing. Definitely yeah. that. There is, like, tone is, is the master in this yeah. whole thing. Like, not... First and foremost. Yeah, first and foremost is tone. So the one thing that I wanted to talk about specifically about this game, not just that it doesn't do interactive storytelling the way I want it to, it's almost the way I want it to, but not exactly the way, uh, is I kind of felt a little empty after coming out of it. Like I didn't, like, I experienced a game, sure, but I, I didn't experience a whole experience, I felt like. I felt like there was still something missing. Yeah. And I think what that was, to me at least, for, for my personal experience, was the growth of a, of a skill. Mm. And the thing is, with, with almost every game, you have a skill that's building up, and that's the mechanic that you're using. There's one mechanic that you start to master over the, the time. Uh, and I always talk about Portal being the best of both worlds where you're doing the story, but you're also mastering the mechanic of using the Portal technique to, to go through certain places. Um, and by the end of Portal, you feel like you've mastered Portal. Yeah. And you want to go back in and do different puzzles. Yeah. Like after this, I don't really want to go back in and do more puzzles because that's not really the point of the game. Yeah. You know, there, there's no... You can't the, do it better. Yeah, you can't do it better. Yeah. That's the thing. Um, and that's and that's kind of what makes me feel just a little empty. It's just it's not it's not a ton. It's not really bothersome. It doesn't come up all the time, but it does. It's just a little thing that I'm just yeah. like. Yeah. It's basically like explaining why this game isn't quite a masterpiece. That's yeah. <laughs> and it sucks because that's that's what gets gets to me really. Yeah. Is, is just that it's not quite a masterpiece. And like, if anyone were to ask me should I play this game, I would undoubtedly say yes. Yeah. Right. Absolutely, yeah, everybody should play, should play this. this game. Yeah, everyone should. Um, but <laughs> <laughs> um, and it's this not is, ten out of ten. Yeah, this is the only spot really that I can talk about that kind of stuff. Like, I feel like I feel like if I talked about that with anyone else, they'd be like, "Oh, so you don't like the game?" Yeah, yeah that's not what it is. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. There's, we, we're here to talk about things that we don't like about. Nine out of ten games. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, that's what we were did. What is the one in the nine out of ten? <laughs> the uh, yeah, exactly, exactly that. So uh, even though we did praise this game quite a bit. Yeah, yeah, love it through and through, ex except for you know that that one, that yeah. one part. Yeah. In conclusion, for me, this game is amazing, and I want to play because I, I played Limbo. I haven't played it in a long time. Like I literally played it like when it came out. Yeah. And so it's been a while. Uh, but I am definitely gonna play whatever they make next. Whatever's next. Yeah. yeah. Like this is a developer to, to 
to play their games when they come out. Definitely. So I'm excited for that. Yeah. Great game. I actually think I like this more than Limbo, actually. I, so I want to go back and play Limbo to completion now. Yeah, just yeah. to be able to compare freshly. Yeah, because I do maybe, want to yeah. yeah. Maybe we should do that. We should. We should. <laughs> um, yeah, and I definitely want to keep an eye on the next game from these developers because yeah. it's really, really cool. Um, I love games like this uh, about just this whole like very tone driven kind of like emotional driven kind of thing. Like I, I fall in love with mechanics when they happen, but you can't beat stuff like that, you know? Yeah. It's just that's such an interesting experience and mm -hmm. I just I love that stuff. Yeah. So yeah. And the world is really interesting. Yeah. Yeah, so it's just it's just a phenomenal experience, and I would definitely recommend it to anyone who has who hasn't played these games. Yeah. Well, thank you for watching. If you liked this video and you enjoyed the content here, be sure to subscribe because we're going to be doing more videos like this. This yeah. channel is dedicated to this show, hence the name Games Over Coffee. <laughs> for the channel. <laughs> That's true, yes. <laughs> that, that is it. So subscribe if you liked it. Yeah. Uh, also leave a comment if you have a game that you want us to cover on the show. Yeah, that would be We'd pretty be cool. Happy to see what you guys want us to play. Yeah, we're, we, want, we really want to do some crazy games. Yeah, we kind of want to play something weirder. Something weird. Yeah. yeah. Um, we're going to get into the indie territory pretty soon. Yeah. Um, so, so if you know any so really strange games. Oh, we didn't talk about Lakitu here. Oh yeah, is that Lakitu? It is Lakitu. It's a wide Lakitu. It was a Lakitu without a shell. Ooh. Or, or a Koopa. Ooh. So it's just the cloud. So we need a different name for it. Hmm. Name Hume. our cloud. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Leave a comment down below. <laughs> name our cloud. <laughs> top 10. Top, top 10, 10 names for our names. clouds. Anyway. <laughs> we'll do a, we'll do a random number generator <laughs> and a lucky comment down below whoever whatever comment is it's not even a name just whatever the comment just whatever the is, comment is will become the name of this cloud yes it'll be you guys suck yeah that'll you guys be. if that's what it is <laughs> I, i'm not one to uh your mom's gay if that's what it is <laughs> that's what i'm saying so ran, random comment will be picked yep. to be the name production value production that's be his name it could be it could be <laughs> First. First. <laughs> I'm going to go comment. Yes. And I'm going to delete no, everybody else's that, comments. No, you can't do that. Yeah. It doesn't work that way. Peace. <laughs>